On April 17, Lee received requests to meet separately, again with Scott, and also with Francis Preston Blair Sr. Uh, Blair was the patriarch of one of the great political families of the United States. He'd been part of Andrew Jackson's kitchen at cabinet, an influential figure on the Washington scene for many decades. He and his family were well known to R.E. Lee. The meetings both took place on the morning of the 18th. Blair had been empowered by President Lincoln, quote, to ascertain Lee's intentions and feelings, and by Secretary of War Simon Cameron to offer Lee command of a force that was being gotten up in the vicinity of Washington that would be used to compel uh, the seceding states to rejoin the United States. So Blair asked Lee to assume command of this army being raised to put down the rebellion. He offered a range of arguments, including the observation that the people of the United States looked to Lee, quote, as a representative of the Washington family. I think this indicates that he knew Lee well. He knew how important Washington was. That connection, of course, was, uh, that's an allusion to Lee's marriage to Marianna Randolph Custis, the daughter of George Washington's step-grandson. Lee declined Blair's offer, as we all know, with the explanation that he opposed secession but would not take up arms against the South. He didn't say against Virginia. He said against the South. Proceeding immediately to Winfield Scott's office, Lee recounted his conversation with Blair and reiterated that he would not lift his sword against fellow Southerners, as he put it. Tradition has it that a disappointed Scott, also a Virginian, born in Dinwiddie County, replied, Lee, you've made the greatest mistake of your life, but I feared it would be so. Scott added that if Lee <coughs> decided uh, not to accept appointment, to command this United States Army that he should resign his commission immediately. Don't think about it, resign if you're not going to accept this. 